Ed, $430 billion, where is all of that going? Yeah, it's, it's basically an expansion of the 2018 plan. You know, when, when President Trump was in office, Apple announced this $350 billion investment that basically expanded their footprint. So outside of Cupertino, the company's headquarters, they want to add 5,000 employees in San Diego, Southern California. It's a place they've been growing. They want to basically increase their headcount there by 60% in 2026. $1 billion for a new hub in North Carolina, which is interesting. A lot of high-tech jobs there. They want to focus on R&D and things like machine learning and artificial intelligence. I think that North Carolina's governor has already taken to Twitter. You know, it's probably a big win for him to bring Apple to that state. But it's interesting because when you think about Apple, you do think about California. They're making investments outside, though, right? They have this $1 billion uh, facility in Austin where they hope to start moving employees into by the end of this year. They're expanding their footprint in states like Colorado and Massachusetts. So really, that's where the focus is. And in terms of direct spend, very little. It's more about the ecosystem of suppliers um, that, that they're also tapping into. Ed, I just want to come back to the maths a little bit, and you can't belittle these numbers because they're absolutely enormous. But, but how much of this is new and how much of this is basically kind of a little bit of addition? And I say little bit, obviously, I'm talking about huge numbers, but in addition to the previous number, I just want to make sure that the kind of the headline figure is, is a reflection of reality here. Yeah, when the news hit the Bloomberg this morning, I did sit there and think, hold on, I've heard about this before. <laughs> and look back to the Bloomberg News story from 2018. You'll remember it because at the time, President Trump very publicly took to Twitter, took to television to say that he'd spoken to Tim Cook on the phone. You know, Tim, President Trump at the time really played this up as a win. So to answer your question, Guy, not much of it is, is new. What happened is that in spite of the pandemic, 2020 was a very good year for Apple. Financially, you remember in the fourth quarter, they registered $100 billion of revenue for the first time. And they are upping that 2018 investment. They are increasing the hiring target. They are upping the capex that they plan to spend. And they're expanding the footprint print beyond the existing states that, that they had named. They did plan to do a new hub in the 2018 plan, but this time around we're learning that it's North Carolina. So we're just mm. getting some meat on the bones of what they'd originally planned. Well, Ed, you mentioned they're talking about President Trump, but I wonder how much of this is, has, has a political tie-in, because Apple in the right. press release also pointed out they've paid $45 billion in taxes over the last five years. Can you just talk about that? very good spot. So the political story here is that Apple, along with its big tech peers, is in the spotlight because of President Biden's proposals for taxing overseas profits. You know, there's a fantastic story on the Bloomberg over the weekend that between the, the big four or five FANG stocks or FANG stocks, they, they paid about $100 billion or they recorded about $100 billion of overseas profit between them last year. If Biden's rules that are on the table now had been in place in fiscal 20, Apple probably would have paid about $4 billion more in tax than mm. it actually did. That's one thing. The other part is that Tim Cook's been really neutral on the Biden presidency since Biden took office. Um, you, you, you may remember that he called out President Trump on certain items uh, throughout the course of his presidency, but since Biden Biden's taken office, we've only really had one interview that he gave where he basically said, we don't get involved in politics, we're only interested on policy. Well, that was a good spot, Kayleigh, on tax in the press release, because that's one policy they're clearly uh, very conscious of. In terms of how this fits into the narrative around chips as well, Ed, I, yeah. we were talking to uh, Gelsinger the other week from, from Intel, making a big investment into the United States, looking for more maybe in terms of government assistance. What is Apple doing? How much of this is, is software? How much of this is hardware? How much fits into this idea that actually the US needs to produce chips at home and Apple is starting to do that for itself. Maybe now it wants to do that domestically as well. Yeah, we're not able to quantify that, but there are very clear references in the press release to silicon and silicon research. You know, for, for, for the audience, what has happened in the last 12 months or so is that Apple has, has like other big tech companies, including Google and Amazon, has moved towards designing its own chips, using its own in-house processors, where historically, in Apple's case, they have used Intel. You know, that is largely how the chip industry has worked in the past. We, we refer to chip makers like Qualcomm, for example, but really those guys just design and license chips. What, what Apple is moving to do is design its own and then 
look to third party manufacturers to fabricate them. Um, and that is really part of what's shaken up the, the chip supply chain in recent years. It's one reason why Intel moved so aggressively uh, with that 20 billion investment plan, not just to double down on it manufacturing of its own chips, but to launch its own foundry business where it can make the designs of others, including its own customers or existing customers like Apple. Ed, I just want to focus on the financials of the company. We just had a chart yeah. up on the screen that showed its cash pile, something like $200 billion. And yet, right. despite that, we've also seen Apple tap the debt markets over the last year just because it can, because borrowing costs are cheap. Can you just talk me through the financing of this investment? Could we see Apple come to the debt markets yet again? Yeah, we don't have much reaction this morning, but what we do know is that between May of last year and February, the last time that Apple tapped the U.S. investment grade market, they, they came back three times. The last was about $4 billion, um, right? That was the first time since 2017 that Apple had returned to the market more than once in a 12-month period. You know, they've, they've mm -hmm. basically taken advantage of cheap uh, financing. Um, and and I, uh, the only reaction we have really is from our Bloomberg intelligence colleagues of the credit team saying, if you look at the free cash flow model for the next five years, it's around $450 billion over that period. This proposal is $430 billion. Not all of it is, is direct capex anyway. So there's no concern here. It looks like Apple is mm -hmm. in rude health compared to its peers. I mean, cash on balance uh, that Apple has is, is, as you say, $200 billion. It dwarfs. Uh, the rest of big tech. I don't think there's any concerns here that this will be d a disruptive uh, move by Apple. If anything, I think the expectation is that we'll see more buybacks and greater dividends to come.